Hi everybody, this is Dr. OG from MP Skills Made Easy Workshops and you're listening to the Prescriber Essentials Podcast, the show that helps you delve into the world of clinical skills and knowledge for clinicians who love to continually improve their clinical skills. I discuss content to help you grow professionally and the opportunities and strategies to provide excellent care like a pro. So I would uh, want for us to talk a little bit about uh, transitioning uh, your role from being an, an RN to a nurse practitioner. And I believe that this concept hopefully would help you to get you to where you want to be. I know it's not going to take, uh, it's not going to take just one day, uh, but really something for, for you to get started. Uh, so one thing about MP education that I want for you to know is that you cannot learn everything you need to know in school. Okay. That's a fact. Uh, regardless of what you can see, the number of textbooks that are there, uh, you would get your aha moments from time to time. But we can teach you how to learn that you serve that will serve you the way that you would learn uh, that will serve you throughout your career, and that's what we're trying to do. So uh, when I talk about guidelines, when I talk about okay, well, you know, you need to look at the textbook. There's no blueprint. Uh, truly, that's the case because there's no blueprint when it comes to seeing your patients. You have to know. Uh, you know, how to, you, you have to really just trust us in the process. So that's one fact. Uh, you cannot learn ev any, everything you need to know in school. There would be a lot of things that you'll learn upon graduation. And I'll say up to two to three years after graduation. Okay. So thinking like a nurse um, uh, versus thinking like a nurse practitioner, two different things. Uh, you know that as a nurse, we talked about the nursing process. We went from assessment to nursing diagnosis, uh, to your planning, implementation, and, and um, evaluation, and really thinking about the nursing process and critical thinking. As a nurse practitioner, now we're talking more about, well, you see a patient, uh, what are your thoughts about asking questions? What is your subjective data? What is your objective data? Okay. So again, gathering a good history is always a good place to start because again, uh, the first five minutes that you see a patient uh, the patient will tell you their diagnosis if you were listening. So critical thing, uh, crit critical listening skills is important uh, working as a nurse practitioner. So you want to ask relevant questions to the patient. So what is the occupation? Where do they live? Uh, who do they live with? Who cooks for them? Uh, do they have a, a spouse? Uh, all those things are relevant questions because at the end of the day, uh, you'll find that those are critical components to, to the patient adhering to the plan of care that you have uh, available or you're trying to uh, uh, hopefully uh, get started with this patient. So we talk about chief complaints. Uh, you, you all know how to write soap notes by now. We talk about the history of presenting illness. So using old cards, we talk about the patient's history, surgical history, uh, medical history, all those things are important. And then, of course, the social history, the current medications. So for each visit, these, these are the components that you want to really be uh, mindful of taking, taking note of. Their current medications, are they on pre any other prescription medications that could interfere with the, uh, the medication that you're trying to prescribe? Are they on any herbs, any supplements? Uh, you want to know their allergies. Do they have allergies to the medications you're trying to prescribe? So uh, the review of system is important. Always include in, for your uh, female patients that are in childbearing age, always include their last menstrual cycle. You never want to miss a, a patient that is pregnant, even though they might not think they are. Uh, think about the, the just being logical and organizing your, in your approach to collecting data. So this is definitely like a night and day. And I say that because that's two different, uh, being a nurse and being a nurse practitioner are two different roles. Uh, regardless of how you want to look at it. As a nurse, you were taking orders. As a nurse practitioner, uh, you were giving, uh, you are the one that will give the orders. So hopefully this uh, begins to um, form a little hypothesis in your, in your mind in terms of, okay, well, what do I have to do differently uh, to step into my new role? All right, so why is this important? It's important because uh, patient safety uh, is critical, right? 
uh, we have in in healthcare we have seen an estimated amount of uh, of um, uh, I say estimated amount. What I mean is one in three hundred patients uh, are uh, would suffer from patient death as a result of the healthcare they're receiving. So really think about it and think about it versus in your airplane. So getting on a plane, uh, the, the, the number here is one in three million risk of dying. So think about healthcare one in 300 versus being on an airplane, one in three million. Uh, and this tells you that the industries are pretty much different. So the aviation industry, they have a much better safety record than healthcare does in terms of patient safety, in terms of the way that uh, they, they safely uh, perform their duties versus in healthcare. And that's why it's critical for you to be really attentive, pay attention whenever it is that you are, uh, you are in front of a patient, you're caring for your patients. All right, so this is a fact, fact number one. This is a, a document that we, uh, we gathered from the World Health Organization. Uh, one in every 10 patients is harmed while receiving hospital care, okay? And so when you think about it, the harm can be caused by a range of adverse events, uh, ranging from you know, human factor to even just machine mal uh, malfunctioning. Um, um, so again, nearly 50% of them uh, are considered preventable if you think about it. And that's why, again, paying attention to your, your uh, providing patient care, paying attention to whenever it is that you're prescribing medication, asking the relevant questions, making sure this patient does not have um, you know, side effects that could result in, again, patient safety issues that we're talking about and harming this patient, okay? <clears throat> so an estimated uh, 44K to 98K patients will die per year from medical errors and the equivalent of a jumbo jet a day. So again, you know, just uh, buttressing that point that I, I talked about uh, again and again, just being mindful of this. Uh, the third leading cause of death in the United States, most doctors don't want you to know about. So again, medical errors would be the third leading cause of death after heart disease and cancer. Uh, so again, this is a, a recent study from uh, Jop, uh, Johns Hopkins, and uh, you can kind of see for yourself, uh, lots of people are dying from medical errors. Advocates are fighting back, pushing for greater legislation for patient safety, and you should be one of those advocates as a nurse practitioner. So being, being mindful, and I put the slides up here, um, and I know Dr. Alting had, uh, uh, had uh, put, put this forth as well, but you know, again, buttressing that point that um, it's important for you to know what you're doing as, as a nurse practitioner. So I want uh, to bring your attention to the NP malpractice data. And uh, this data really just showcases the malpractice cases for nurse practitioners. Uh, we have noticed an increase between 2008 and to 2018. So in the last 10 years, uh, and again, you can see the settings, 48% of uh, malpractice claims would be in ambulatory care settings, 10% in the emergency department. And so if you think about it, uh, most of your cases will be diagnosis related. So are we actually making diagnosis or are we sitting on diagnosis and thinking about it? And so I say this because again, uh, it, it is your job uh, to, make, to be able to make those diagnoses for your patients. It is your job to be able to um, send the patient on to a higher level of care if this is required uh, to, uh, you know, if that's a requirement. Oh, remember what I always say, in family practice, we're jack of all trades, master of none, and that's why we have specialty. So always consider that you are not specialty, and once it's over your head, please send this patient on to the higher level of care. All right, a couple more things that I want to talk about would be key factors that contribute to uh, malpractice. So failure to address relevant signs and symptoms or test results. And I'll give you an example. The other day, I had a patient that coming uh, with a UTI. Uh, this patient had actually, he, by, the, by the time he had seen me, uh, he had rolled around the second time. The patient already had pyelonephritis. So this patient was in the care of a urologist, and I did check the data, and I saw that he was seen by a urologist who ordered a, a, a urine culture. But the urologist never followed, followed up uh, with that test result. And so this patient uh, had, you know, of course, delay, uh, delay in his results. And by the time he had seen me, 
He was already, he already was in a full blown pile on the Fridays. And so again, not being able to address the signs and symptoms that the patient presents with, not being able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at the test results in a, in a, in a, you know, in a, a fairly quickly uh, manner in such a way that the patient receives, receives the care that they, that they, uh, they need is, would lead to medic, medical negligence. Um, so as a nurse practitioner, Again, the factors that are specific to nurse practitioners is failure to obtain consults or referrals. So sometimes a patient comes in with strep throat and we see them that diagnosis, okay? So they, you treat them with amoxicillin the first time, they come back in eight weeks with the same symptoms. Now you're like, okay, well, let's move on to augmenting. You treat them again. The third time they come in, you're treating and treating with antibiotics without asking yourself, could there be something else going on, okay? And then failure to establish your differential diagnosis is another NP-specific uh, factor that you want to know about. So again, I'm just giving you food for thought this morning. As you all transition to being a nurse practitioner, uh, uh, you want to be really mindful of your practice. You want to own your practice. And you also want to make sure that there's a shared uh, decision-making uh, interaction with your patient because again, that does minimize uh, errors from occurring. So where do these errors occur? Take a look at this slide here. In the ambulatory care, 51% uh, would be the highest uh, uh, occurrence of, of the medical errors we talked about. In the ED is 21%, in inpatient settings, 28%. So think about this for a moment. In your clinic, 51% of errors would occur. Okay, so I'm gonna pause and kind of think about this for a minute. That's a lot of errors. That's a lot, a lot of errors. So again, being mindful uh, is something that you you want to be you want to be as you be as you transition to your role as a nurse practitioner. Ambulatory care versus inpatient care versus ED. Uh, so again, you can see here, clinical judgment is always uh, something that nurse practitioners and honestly all providers struggle with. Uh, the technical skills is another thing. So knowing how to interpret your labs, your EKGs, your x-rays, those are skills that uh, you want to focus on, you know, becoming better at. And then, of course, communication, making sure that if a patient has any issues at all, you've ordered labs, that you're communicating to the patient uh, and letting them know what's going on and following up on those labs and EKGs. If you like what you hear on the show, then be sure to check out our Prescriber Essentials Academy, which is a continuing education platform where we delve deeper. Visit schools.mpskillsmadeeasy.com to join us. See you on the other side.